Hey, it's the fun chess episode! And who best to cover this chess tournament than Wolfman Zack? Hey, and it's a touchdown! <laughs> the why is KKTY broadcasting a chess tournament? And who's St. Murray's? And who is this too cool for school dude in the Yankees hat? And, and why oh why is this St. Murray's player in his boxers? Hey, what's going on here? No answers. In fact, Zach and Jesse stop running commentary as Mr. Belding speaks. Can the radio listeners hear him? Mr. Belding announces that the last game was pointless and stupid, as the deciding game is to be played by this nerd and this nerd. Shut up, Dustin Diamond. And with his lucky bur- Let's go! Fish and fight! Let's go, Bay Fight, fight, fight! What? <laughs> they came out of nowhere! And why are cheerleaders at a chess match? This oddity existed before Will Ferrell and Sherry O'Terry did their famous Spartan cheerleader sketch on SNL. K-I-N-G, you can't take my king from me, you're ugly! Ha-ha, you're ugly! Woo! Not cute! Woo! And to prove that cute girls can get away with practically anything... Go Screech Flatness King! <laughs> they still get to cheer after Slater is silenced. Not that I freaking mind. Screech wins and qualifies for a championship match against Valley, and Zack gets visions of dollar signs by capitalizing on Screech's newfound popularity. Hey, who wants shirts we somehow just made? They take money, but only hand shirts out to four people. This guy gets one, this guy gets one, Violet gets a dozen, and Shirt Hoodie gets one. Sorry, Herbert. Your dollars are gone. Hey, Slater. That we just crawled out of the sewer. Vinny and Guy Guy. Vinny and Guy Guy, huh? I guess we're showing that Valley isn't just made up of rich jocks, but also rich, greasy mob dudes. Also, these guys are cousins. Just like Dan and Stan Clegg. Do you have to be rich and a cousin to attend Valley? <laughs> All right, so standard high school rivalry stuff. The boys make a bet for $300 that Screech will win the championship. Valley introduces their ringer, Peter Brezhnev. He's from Russia. This will play heavily into the episode. I have your queen and you're in check with an Arabian night trap. What do you do? Huh, it's simple. I use the Spassky Bishop block. Well, Spassky Bishop Block! <laughs> How did you know about that? Spassky is my uncle. Spassky practically invented chess. No, he didn't. But Boris Spassky was a prolific world champion chess master. Despite his brilliance, he's probably best known for losing to Bobby Fischer in 1972. One thing that is for sure, you ain't no Bobby Fischer, Bobby Fischer. Where is he? I don't know, I don't know. Let's go back to this exchange. Because Googling chess stuff helped me realize that this is nonsense. I have your queen and you're in check with an Arabian night trap. What do you do? Huh. It's simple. I use the Spassky Bishop block. First off, the Arabian night trap is a basic check in chess. A player's knight and rook trap a king in a corner. But Screech's scenario is too vague, as nothing tells Peter what other pieces he still has on the board. So Peter takes the reins and blows Screech's mind. It's simple, I use the Spassky Bishop block. The Spassky Bishop block doesn't seem to exist. Someone please tell me if I'm wrong, but the only thing I can find is that Spassky would sometimes use his bishops in crazy ways. I did find that Urban Dictionary defines the Spassky Bishop block as a guy hiding his junk while he pees in the nature. And the definition has a 70% approval rate, so... legitimate? So, yeah, this exchange is pretty amateur. And despite Screech's concerns, he is convinced that his lucky beret will be the difference maker. Screech, you will win, you will win, you will win, you will win! Oh! Yeah, Screech, you get that Russian! Hey, who gave Herbert Hodus a t-shirt? Oof, we are really leaning into the 90s nerd trope here. I remember last season when Mr. Belding was trying to pimp out his niece? Sorry, I'm in training for the next chess tournament. So? So, coach says women sap your strength. 
Yeah, this is what Herbert Hodes was referring to. And Franklin Finkley's consequence for being the worst nerd is scrimmaging with Screech. Zack and Slater continue making money off Screech as Shirt Hoodie wasn't satisfied with just a janky t-shirt. Hmm, is this sexism? What I mean is, when Zack was making money for Lisa, he pimped out her face. Dollars for kisses. Here is just a picture with Screech. Are we saying that smooches are only for lady exploitation and not for the guys? That's not fair to Screech. Exploit his face! Then again, objectively, there's a market for dudes to perv on the attractive Lisa and less so for our tragic Screech. So maybe this portrayed sexism is actually a reflection of reality. And what is happening here? She wants Screech. Uh, an insight that shouldn't be too hard to conceive at this point. I'm Allison Fox from Chess Boy Magazine, and I'd really like to check out your moves. <laughs> you know what I mean. Not exactly. Shut up, Dustin Diamond. To Screech's credit, he doesn't ogle this attractive, full-grown woman's chest. Miss Fox continues to flirt with Screech and invites him to lunch to do the Chess Boy interview. Nobody can understand what's going on. There are mysteries you just can't explain. <laughs> like why does Sinead O'Connor have a hairdryer? <laughs> Aha! Another reference to the Irish singer Sinead O'Connor. Who are you? Who am I? Oh, I'm... I'm Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> There are mysteries you just can't explain. <laughs> like, why does Sinead O'Connor have a hairdryer? In the pre-internet 90s, we were obsessed with the idea of a famous bald lady. Any joke about hair loss had to include a reference to Sinead O'Connor. Honestly, I didn't even know her songs or what she looked like, but I definitely participated in the bald equals Sinead wisecracking. Turns out, she was a lovely looking lady with a beautiful voice and a punk rock attitude. Despite 10 albums to her name, she's probably most known for ripping up a picture of the Pope on Saturday Night Live. Hmm, that's two talents in this video known for their perceived negative things. So why focus so much on this? Because Slater shows that even Saved by the Bell was even in on the brazen, bald Sinead bashing. There are mysteries you just can't explain. <laughs> like why does Sinead O'Connor have a hairdryer? <laughs> <laughs> this joke is so cheap and lazy. First off, Sinead O'Connor formally had hair, but shaved it off to protest creepy record executives who wanted her to look more feminine. So she legit could have owned a hair dryer. Second, even if she didn't, in order for the joke to truly land, Slater would have to be physically in her room to say, Like, why does Sinead O'Connor have a hair dryer? Ladies and gentlemen, I did not ask AI to make this image. This is from a photo shoot for People magazine. Sometimes I just get lucky researching these videos. With the chess boy lunch scheduled, Miss Fox calls Guy Guy her high school boyfriend? So like, I'll break up him and his girlfriend, and he'll be way too bugged out to play chess. So she's not a woman, but a high school child, which makes this exaggerated Zoom awkward now. So we're at the chess boy lunch, and well, I had to take a couple days off to wrap my head around why this scene doesn't sit right with me. I think I've pinned it down. Allison's big plan is simply to break up Screech and Violet. Kelly and the gang are appalled at Allison's flirting, and we are almost forced to watch the scene as if Violet is getting jealous. But she's not. I mean, Allison does some kinda flirty things, like a shoulder touch, a little pencil jab, and another shoulder touch. But Screech is so unaffected that it is clear that he's not picking up whatever she thinks she's putting down. No, Violet is not jealous. She's offended. So what our readers want to know is, what makes Screech Powers a winner? Well, there is one thing. I could never win without... Oh, Samuel, you're so sweet. My lucky beret. A hat? Yep. I mean, look at her face melt. That's not from the fear of losing your man. That's from expecting your man to say you are his checkmate inspiration, and then realizing your man is Screech, who never says anything right. And then there's this example. I never wore the hat of a genius before. Oh, and no. See, I gave that to Samuel, and he never let sure. anyone... Know. <laughs> Screech is just oblivious and inconsiderate. 
We're having a pool party at the Chessboy Mansion on Saturday, and I'd like you to come as my personal guest. <laughs> Samuel can. <laughs> we have plans. Violet, did you hear that? So if the wedge between Screech and Violet was to stem from jealousy, why have Screech and Violet act this way? Why have the gang around to plant the idea of Allison's flagrant flirting? Honestly, with how the scene plays out and Screech's idiocy, Allison could have been played by a guy and nothing would have changed. Watch. Oh, Screech, we're having a pool party at the Chess Boy Mansion on Saturday, and I'd like you to come as my personal guest. <laughs> Samuel can. <laughs> we have plans. Violet, did you hear that? I get to swim in the pond-shaped pool! <laughs> Screech doesn't care about seeing this full-grown woman, I mean, fellow high school student, in a swimming suit. He only cares about the experience. And when the girls find Violet fuming, they tell her just that. But weren't they the ones saying Violet should be mad about the flirting? So Violet is convinced that Screech is an awkward idiot and rushes to be with him. But the second he proves that he's an awkward idiot, she leaves? <sighs> this effing plot. I'd wear the blue ones because they match your eyes. Thanks. No problem. Squeeze, squat, squilly doop bop. Best building ever. Zack and Slater show up to explain that Allison was a spy and that she has Screech's lucky beret. But, but it's supposed to be in Screech's locker. Well... Better go hide this in my locker. It's got a false bottom. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And even if it did, you aren't looking where a false bottom would be. And hey, not to worry. Zack and Slater lie about stealing Screech's beret back. Oh, he's gonna win! And then they sell unofficial Screech berets. Yo, Herbert is wearing the same clothes as before. Just this time he has a sweater vest. When Screech shows Violet that he got the beret back, she fails to see her love emanating from it and divines that it's a fake. Man, little buddy just can't catch a break. <laughs> Ooh, don't break, don't break! Screech feels... bad. The day of the chess championship rolls around and Screech is in shambles. The valley entourage rolls through and requests payment now. Oh, well, like, we'll just have to wait and see, okay? Okay. <laughs> With one last trick up their sleeve, our boys tell Peter he needs a pre-match photo. It's right this way, Peter. Hurry. There isn't much time. Yep, that's why we're rushing you. <laughs> All right, we throw in a little bit of Peter, a little bit of Zach, and... That's actually not a bad likeness. Everybody else seems to think so too. And then Slater proves yet again why he doesn't belong on the radio. Call it a hunch, but I think Screech is gonna kick that commie's butt. <laughs> Slater, we're on the air. In this age of Glasnost, you don't say kick the commie's butt. Glasnost, Jesse? Yeah, that's a word for our Saturday morning kids. About this time, Mikhail Gorbachev, the leader of the Soviet Union, was trying to have his government be more open with the media and the world. This policy was branded by the Russian word glasnost. I guess Jesse thought Slater's high school radio exclamation would ruin this favorable policy? Welcome to the All-City Chess Finals. You know, in a way, it's more than All-City. Well, Zach can't keep a straight face. Probably because of Screech. And now it's time for the championship match. Good luck, son. Paris Stryker, son. <laughs> Paris Stryker? That's the Russian word for the concept of societal and economic reformations. Not sure why Mr. Belding is using it here. Stop your crying, stop your fussing, come on, Screech, beat that Russian! Uh, glasnost, ladies. Glasnost. The match begins, and Zack blows Screech's mind with incredibly illegal moves. Boy, yeah, you're good! No, he's not. And you should know it, Screech. As Zack tries to forfeit, Peter finds his way to the stage. Uh, no, no, you're right, Mr. Belding. Leave the naked, tied-up kid on stage while you sort things out. 
Upon hearing of all the shenanigans, Mr. Belding disqualifies both schools. Wait a minute! The bat's off? Then you're broke! I'm out of here! <laughs> Not gonna lie, Allison rocks the F out of this outfit. I kinda wish this was the Stevie look instead of this blown out oddity. And if Allison is with Guy Guy, why did Vinny get so touchy in this earlier scene? Since Screech and Peter were unknowing pawns, ugh, I hate puns. Mr. Belding lets the match go on. It is cold, I want my pants back. <laughs> and because we can't make the almighty Zach Morris take off Peter's pants to become as vulnerable as the Russian, Franklin Finkley pulls out some pants from somewhere. I mean, he wasn't holding them before. I think the pants are this dark thing at Franklin's feet. Who is this lady? With Peter in some pants and Herbert Hodis in his same pants, the match gets underway, but not without some good old forced it wasn't the beret, it was my love all along speech. Cute, but kind of unearned. I must break you. Oh, farts! We've still got a match to play! It's a grueling, tense matchup with nuanced sacrifices. Check me. Okay, and it's over. All that build up and hype and meh. But hey, Zach's got a new breakfast cereal to profit from, which is a blend on the Cheerios name and the Wheaties sports gimmick. Wait a minute. In that overhead shot, there are captured chess pieces being placed to the side. Where do they go? Oh, you need an unobstructed shot of the winning move? Just move those effing pieces! I've got one last thing to address about the plot. In Violet's big speech, we get this sweet interaction. I love you, Sammy. I love you too, Violet. Aww. I've said it elsewhere, but it bears repeating. Screech and Violet were the best couple in Saved by the Bell. They went through a lot together, and we actually got to see their growth as a couple. And here we get confessions of love! The maddening thing is, we never see Violet again. Tori Spelling was still killing it on Beverly Hills 90210 and could not routinely show up here. Which is too bad, because I love this couple. So, the episode's over, it must be time for... The, the perfect cheer! cheer. No, uh, while well, that would be great, it's time for guest stars. Matt Kaminsky played Peter Brezhnev, and he's not even credited. The story goes that Matt was too serious on set, as he was more of a dramatic actor. A producer told him to think of Saved by the Bell as a live-action cartoon, and that loosened him right up. As fate would have it, Matt returned to the franchise in the new class as a cheating cowboy in another episode centered on betting. And... Can you believe it? He also appears as a delivery guy in The Reimagining. Matt has had a long career in Hollywood with brief on-screen appearances and voiceover work. One bit of voiceover work was for those Catherine Zeta-Jones T-Mobile commercials. Now, I'm not going to play his voice. This was just a good excuse to show some Catherine Zeta-Jones clips. He is also the singer for the group The Four Postmen. Way to be multi-talented, Matt. Vinny Masters was played by Greg Fitzpatrick. Greg has led a double life and that he has acted in several projects through the years, and also that he is an award-winning stuntman. He's done a ton of stunts for Ben Stiller. Here he is with Ben looking like Tom Cruise, which is funny because Ben Stiller once did a bit where he was Tom Cruise's stunt double named Tom Cruise. I wonder if Greg Fitzpatrick doubled for Ben Stiller as Ben Stiller doubled as Tom Cruise for Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmed grown Lady Allison was played by Hilary Hayes. Hilary only has four on-screen credits, so I went ahead and watched them all. Her first gig was on Dream On as a college student slash public access channel TV producer. The screen time is limited, but she plays inexperienced and assertive very well. That same year, she appeared on Saved by the Bell, but then went five years before appearing in that one Jean-Luc Picard as Scarface scene in Star Trek First Contact. And then it was ten years until her last appearance in the movie The Gymnast, in a blink-and-you'll-miss-it appearance. 
Hillary moved on from acting and is currently a high-end interior designer based in Hollywood. And do we talk about Guy Guy being played by Matt Mendel and his short films? Nah, you let yourself get played, you let yourself get shaved. The off my video. Ah, Screech, don't listen to those guys. They're all talk. I know, but they're saying the right words. 